Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. Today I want to talk about the 9.8 comic book market. I got a bunch of completed sales in the 9.8 that just recently ended on Comic Link. So uh, we'll get into kind of some of the market details as we go through each one. But first one is an NYX number three in a CGC 9.8. First full appearance of X-23 Laura Kinney, the kind of uh, second Wolverine or the, the clone of a uh, Logan. Uh, this one had sold in a 9.8 in the last few days here for $2,050. This one's really hanging in there, I would say, in a 9.8. Uh, you know, before, about two years ago, I would say, before the kind of coronavirus hot comic book market, this one was, you know, right around $1,000, maybe a little bit under, like $900 to $1,000. Uh, a few years later, we're double that, $2,050. And this one really hasn't, you know, it didn't spike up or anything like that. It's been kind of a slow and steady rise up to $2,000. And... You know, we got some 9.8s that are really pulling back in price and cooling down right now. This one's just kind of hanging right in there. So uh, I think definitely if you're a big Wolverine fan, this is up there on a Wolverine key issues. Certainly if you're an X-23 fan, this is the one to get for sure. So an NYX number three selling for $2,050. Yeah, I think that's right around kind of the fair value right now too. Maybe if you get lucky, you get it a little under uh, 2000 but uh, occasionally you saw kind of a few of these go for like 2,100, 2,200. So I think kind of fair value is about 1,900 to 2,100 or 2,200 on an NYX number three. Next one, uh, New Teen Titans number two. First appearance of Deathstroke the Terminator. I should probably talk about this one a little bit more. Uh, this is one I've come close to purchasing in the past in a 9.8 Deathstroke. It's kind of a big Batman villain, I would say. So, um, you know, I've been tempted on this one certainly in the past. Saw one selling these Comic Link auctions for $930 in a CGC 9.8. Uh, $930, this one's kind of trending up slowly but surely as well. This was one, you know, even when the comic book market really heated up, I didn't see this one heating up too much. It was probably around $600, I would say. Uh, but I think this is another one that's kind of slowly but steadily trending up. It hadn't really spiked up and it hadn't, you know, really pulled back in price. Just one that's uh, a solid villain key issue certainly dc villain key issue and it's just kind of slowly but surely trending up yeah 930 bucks i think is a, a pretty fair value right around 900 on a new teen titans number two in a direct edition cgc 9.8 i think that that's a pretty uh, fair value and and a good value out there and kind of all the if you look at all the 9.8 comics out there uh next one is a web of spider-man number 118 this is the first scarlet spider pretty cool cover on this one first kind of uh, spidey clone story uh, this is a pretty popular 1990s key issue, selling for $550 in a 9.8. Uh, this is one I don't, I, admittedly, I don't really follow this one too closely. It's not one that, you know, I grew up in the 90s and I personally wasn't really that into like Scarlet Spider and the clone stories and all that stuff. But uh, I, yeah, I don't really follow this one. I'm not too sure of the fair value, but one selling for $550 if uh, you're in the market for a, a web of Spider-Man number 118. Next one here, a Wolverine number one. So uh, just uh, from the continuation series of Wolverine number one, uh, first patch, I believe this one is. Pretty well collected. This one sold for $551. Uh, occasionally you'll see one of these kind of slip under 500, but I think kind of the fair value is right around that $500 on a Wolverine number one and a 9.8. So if it's looking pretty good, 551 is probably worth it. Definitely a Wolverine key issue to uh, consider. Uh, and this one as well, Wolverine Limited Series, number one. In these Comic Link auctions, four of them had ended up selling. Uh, so prices were uh, $827, $825, $800, and uh, $895. So uh, there were quite a few of these that had kind of went over 900 You know, even a, a few, I think we documented, that went for about 1000 maybe even a little bit over. So uh, maybe this one's kind of cooling off just a little bit. You know, definitely a classic kind of essential Wolverine key issue. So, you know what? Closer to 800, maybe even a little bit under 700. If you keep an eye on this one, maybe you don't have this one, you're in the market, you want one. If it gets a little bit under 800, I think that's a pretty fantastic deal for a, a Wolverine limited series. Number one, uh, yeah, probably one of the, the biggest uh, Wolverine key issues in the 80s. A pretty fantastic 9.8 to consider. Absolutely. Uh, next one was a pretty great deal, I think. Uh, X-Factor number six in a 9.8. Uh, first full appearance of Apocalypse in this one sold for $485 in a 9.8 white pages. And, uh, you know, for this one, um, uh, certainly a, a bit of a cold book, I would say. Uh, one thing to note on this one, the centering was quite good. Uh, occasionally, you see this one a little bit off-centered, and I don't 
think it's really worth paying up for at all. I think overall this is a really good value. It was a nice centered direct edition and you get it under $500. I think that's looking like a pretty great value for kind of a, a villain 9.8s right now. Like a Vengeance of Bane is kind of 575 to 600. I would say these, these two are pretty comparable. This one a little bit less. And um, yeah, I think if, if you're looking for an X-Factor 6, like a really nice centered one like this one for $485 is a pretty solid deal. Next one is uh, X-Men number 109. There were a few of these that we've documented in the past selling. And uh, this one in a direct edition, 9.8 white pages, sold for $3,400 yeah, on this uh, comic link auction. All US dollars, all the prices we'll talk about as well. Um, so first appearance of Weapon Alpha, a big Alpha Flight kind of key issue if you're into Alpha Flight and, and you know, first appearance of Vindicator basically in this one. Uh, 3,400, that's sort of right around where they've been going. Yeah, I think closer to 3,000 might be, um, you know, a target to aim for. This one going for 3,400 on an X-Men 109. Yeah, definitely a, a pretty awesome investment grade uh, 9.8 um, of this uh, era of X-Men comics for sure. Uh, Uncanny X-Men, or X-Men 117. This is one I've touched on in the past. Is just a cool one that's a good price that uh, I'm kind of a fan of the Shadow King. I remember... Uh, there were really memorable episodes of the X-Men animated series where the Shadow King was in, and he kind of, um, he's like a shapeshifter and kind of uh, spoofed everyone, or took over, sorry, took over kind of, the uh, you know, a bunch of heroes' minds. And yeah, anyways, they were <laughs> really a memorable, uh, those X-Men animated series. So like, I've considered this one in the past, and kind of trending up decently, I would say. This one's selling for $555. I've uh, documented a few of these in the past, like it was a while ago, admittedly, about a year ago, maybe even longer ago, where they'd sort of went around like $300, you know, $325, maybe even like $290 if you got lucky. So I always thought in this era of kind of John Byrne, Terry Austin, X-Men, this was a pretty cool under the radar, kind of a little bit cheaper one that you can get in the 9.8. That's uh, First Appearance of Shadow King and its origin of Professor Xavier as well. So a pretty decent key issue uh, selling for $555. Maybe you get it closer to $500 could be a, a price target to aim for. All right, big key issue, X-Men 129. Saw this one sell in a direct and a newsstand edition on these Comic Link auctions. The uh, newsstand sold for $5,300 and the direct edition sold for $3,875. This one's a really tough uh, 9.8. It's got a single digit 9.8 ratio. Uh, first appearance of Kitty Pride and Sebastian Shaw and Emma Frost, so kind of two villains and a hero in there as a first appearance. Very memorable, awesome cover that this is one of the big key issues from that John Burton Terry Austin run that a lot of people target. And to boot in the 9.8, it's really tough. So I remember uh, there was a direct edition when I had purchased my Amazing Spider-Man 238 9.8. Um, there was a direct edition of X-Men 129 in that same group of auctions. This was like three years ago, but I was really kind of torn between should I go after X-Men 129 or maybe Spider-Man 238. And they both kind of sort of done as well, but maybe X-Men 129 has done a little bit better as a, you know, a 9.8 investment. They'd both done really good. But um, yeah, I think those are decent prices, you know, on the new stand edition. Maybe you get it a little under 5,000 if you're lucky. Uh, yeah, again, this is just a really tough 9.8, so it is really expensive, but a good idea. The, the current market price is uh, $5,300 on a newsstand, $3,875 on a direct. An X-Men number 133, the next one. Yeah, I've touched on this one quite a bit in the past uh, as a, a really cool Wolverine key issue to consider. This is kind of the first uh, Wolverine solo story that predates Wolverine Limited series. Um, sort of in the normal Uncanny X-Men run. Uh, definitely targeted by a lot of Wolverine fans. And this one's trending up quite nice. Uh, selling for $1,138 in a direct edition, 9.8. Um, yeah, this is one sort of right at the beginning of coronavirus. And when I was kind of recommending it quite a bit, it was probably about a year or two ago now, to be honest. Uh, they were around like $550. You know, maybe if you got super lucky, they were a little bit under 500 So this one's slowly but steadily trending up like a lot of Wolverine key issues in it. It is one to consider if you're a Wolverine fan, for sure. Uh, next one, Uncanny X-Men 221. First appearance of Mr. Sinister, selling for $455 in a direct edition. Yeah, we've kind of uh, documented a few. This one, kind of the fair value is like $425 to maybe a lick over $500 uh, in a direct edition. So, um, yeah, first Mr. Sinister. There's some potential there. Hopefully they kind of go with Mr. Sinister in uh, the uh, new uh, X-Men MCU movies that will eventually come out. 
Uh, another X-Men book, Uncanny X-Men 2, 44. First appearance of Jubilee. Sold for $426. Yeah, these are just getting over the $400 mark. I would say that's about a fair value for Uncanny X-Men 244. This one was pretty centered as well. So yeah, like a good centered one for this one. First appearance of Jubilee. Just a little over 400 bucks, I think, is a, is a pretty great value. Uh, and it is an early 90s book, so I do like to be kind of picky on the centering on that one. But uh, that's one I don't have. But yeah, right around 400 is looking like pretty good value. Next one's A Year of the Villain, Hell of Risen, number three. First full appearance of Punchline. I think this one's getting into that zone where you could think of buying it if you're a big Punchline fan. Uh, selling for $177 in this uh, Comic Link auction. I, I always thought that that was about going to be the fair price for this one, $175. Like, you know, a lot of people sort of like this one, and it was in the kind of $225, $200. But uh, for me, this was always one where, you know, Punchline was really cool when it first came out, but, you know, a year or two later, she'll probably cool down quite a bit. You get this one for a better price. 175 177 this one's selling for, I think, is uh, pretty much you can get in there right now if you're a Punchline fan and, and buy that one in the 9.8. I think around 175 is a good value. Okay, next one's uh, Young Avengers number one. Yes, the one I've been absolutely wrong about pretty much uh, the entire time of the video. It's pretty much from like $250, I've been saying. I don't know if you want to buy Young Avengers. It seems expensive. Just And I, I've said in the past, like, occasionally I don't really like... They do it a lot with Avengers, too, where it's like, Young Avengers, New Avengers, Dark Avengers. It's like, you know, after a while, it's just like, that just seems like not that creative to just put another word in front of Avengers and start a whole new series. Um, but one, this one sold for $1,600. And that Hawkeye show is pretty much on Disney Plus right now. So there's a lot of hype for this one. I wouldn't get in there. Uh, personally right now at 1,600. I would wait for this one to cool down. If you're looking for a Young Avengers, number one. Uh, ne next one is one I've kind of, uh, uh, you know, spoke about and uh, it's, it's one to keep an eye on because I think it's cooling down a little bit right now. Avengers 196. One in a direct edition, 9.8 white pages sold on this Comic Link auction for $1,207. So when, you know, Taskmaster is going to be in the Black Widow, this one was like 2000 bucks basically. I think some had even went like 2500 during kind of peak hype times. This is a single digit 9.8 ratio. This is a tough one to find in the 9.8, that kind of plain green cover. So I think this is absolutely one if you're a Taskmaster fan, if you just like this cover like me, it's one you want to think about possibly buying right now on this cool down. 1207 one we documented about a month or two ago went right around $1,000, so maybe you can get a little closer to 1000 but I actually think if it's centered pretty good, looking pretty good, direct edition 9.8 white pages, like 1207 is, is a pretty great deal. Next one's a really great one, I think that's a, a fair value, uh, or a pretty affordable one in the 9.8. A Daredevil, number 197, the first Yuriko Oyama, who eventually she becomes Lady Deathstrike. Uh, so first overall appearance in this Daredevil 197. Cool cover too, uh, you know, a great era of Daredevil comics. Sold on this Comic Link auction for $338. $338, not too bad, I think, for, you know, first appearance of Lady Deathstrike, basically. Pretty cool cover. I think this one's pretty collectible. Making sense around that $338 price if you're a, a Daredevil fan, for sure. Next one's a Canon, The Last Padawan, number six. Yeah, this one, I actually think, um, you know, there were some pretty strong rumors, uh, few months ago that I think they like almost confirmed like Ren's going to be in some type of Star Wars content. I don't know. I don't follow like the pop culture that much to be honest, but uh, this one really kind of popped about a month or two ago. Now maybe just cooling down a little bit more, but I do think there's probably a good chance that, you know, maybe this one can kind of be like a Young Avengers number one, but a Star Wars version of Young Avengers number one. Because Young Avengers number one, there were a lot of, you know, rumors that, uh, um, Young Avengers number one, or uh, sorry, that Kate Bishop was going to be on Disney+, Plus, and, but it still just kept heating up, heating up with each rumor. And I think Canon Last Paddle on number six, if they actually go with Sabine Wren, this one could just continue to heat up, and then if they actually make come up with a show, maybe this one's over a thousand bucks, like a Young Avengers number one. Uh, selling for 583 though, in this auction. $583 for a Canon Last Paddle on number six. Uh, I think a few kind of sold for like six to seven hundred during that pop in popularity, that rumor that just happened. So cooling off a little bit. Closer to 500, I think, the last Padawan 6 is, is uh, making, uh, making sense for me. And yeah, there, there might be some potential with that one. And uh, Canon, the last Padawan, number one is the last one on the list here. Saw this one sell on these Comic Link auctions in a 9.8 for uh, $277. Yeah, this is one I kind of went with. This one 
had pulled back in price about a year ago, sort of in between rent rumors, another, uh, you know, a good time to buy them when they cool down a bit. I bought mine for like 170 something it was. It was a pretty solid price. Like once I saw them really cooling down, I kind of jumped on one. Um, now they're one selling for 277 uh, and I'd be looking, yeah, moving forward here to maybe even add a last paddle on number six for, you know, one going for 583, maybe I can try and get it under 500 in the next six months. Hopefully there's not a lot of a Sabine Wren rumors, but this one's like first appearance of Wren, Ezra Bridger, Hira Sindela, and like the whole gang that's in this uh, uh, comic series, but they don't, it's only at the beginning. There's like a small cameo. It's like one panel that's like half a page. They look kind of cool, but it does say it's the first appearance of the gang on uh, the CGC cases. But um, um, actually, it's really more of a cameo, even though it's right at the beginning of the story. I think that's why they, they put it, it as an actual first appearance. Whereas Canon the Last Padawan 6, you get the first full appearance, and they're on the cover looking awesome. So I do prefer Padawan, uh, Canon the Last Padawan number 6. This was just kind of an, an opportunistic buy. Uh, but maybe I'll add a Last Padawan 6 uh, moving forward here in 2022. Okay, so, uh, yeah, going by some of these prices, I think, like, the market's definitely hanging in there. Um, you know, you got big key issues that are just slowly, steadily trending up in price. I think the ones that have really kind of popped and then cooled down, they're actually starting to sort of tick up in price. But then you see, like, a Wolverine Limited series, number one. Most of those, I think, have been going over $900 on kind of some of the eBay, eBay sales I've been seeing. Uh, so to see a few of those, like, $827, $825, $800, $895. Maybe Wolverine Limited, Limited Series number one's cooling down a little bit, but uh, there's a lot of them in the 9.8, so it's kind of one that I've said it, it's prone to a cool down occasionally. But I think overall, yeah, 9.8 comics hanging in there. I think the market's doing pretty good overall. Definitely not plummeting or anything like that, so you can still, uh, you know, think about purchasing some of these comics, I think, for a fair value. And uh, definitely one of the best things you can do if you're looking to buy these 9.8s is just know the fair value for all the keys you might want and then way less of a chance you'll overpay. And that's pretty much the whole idea behind uh, these uh, pricing type of videos. All right, team, thanks so much for watching though. I'll see you on the next one. If you're liking my content, please subscribe and hit that bell and I'll keep you updated on future videos.